this is a girl of four year old, so this is only the uh, the seals and dishes. I was lucky because I put the head here and I didn't take photographs. But about two weeks after the patient uh, deboned the band, left side band, and he came to rebound the band, and I had the possibility to take the picture. But if you see the situation, initial situation here, it's even worse. It's too much open. It's too much plus two. And so this is a very severe case. <coughs> Okay, so uh, I went to see Ricketts at this moment. This was my first time with Ricketts. It was 1989, 1990, more or less. I, I, I saw, the, I, I showed the case to Ricketts, and Ricketts told me, you have to put a cervical health care. But I, for me, was confusing because I, I was finishing my ortho program, and every book I read says, "No, it's an open bite. You have to put a high dose." So it, it was so difficult for me to understand how how this fight was going to grow if I extrude the model. So uh, I I call this uh, way of thinking that I had at that moment. I call articulator thinking. Because <laughs> Articulators paradigm. We, we, this articulator paradigm is that you think that the mouth works like an articulator. If you extrude the molar, the scissors or the articulator will, will open. You understand? And mouth doesn't work like that. This is one of the reasons I do not, um, I, I am not a fan of mountain casts. I prefer to do what I did with your colleague the other day, to see what happened with the TMJ, to determine what's happening, because there are no best articulators than the mouth of the patient. Okay. 
Some cases I have to run. Some Nó cases. Không Oh. Let's now you can see the the tracing and you will see a convexity of more than one centimeter. So this is a very high convexity. And you will see an incline of the plane, okay? which is pretty normal at the four year age, but if I want to change this complexity, I should bring that occlusal plane down. Mình có thể So the idea is to bring the occlusal plane down and to give posterior support to the TMJ so that way the uh, occlusal plane going down in the back and unlocks posteriorly because it increments the vertical dimension and the mandible tends to rotate or to attack anteriorly. Okay, so this is the plan. I am going to explain because it's different from one uh, clinical uh, uh, one particular uh, clinic clinician and another one and one book the other book one article the other article I going I am going to explain how this appliance did the best work for me I put a band in the second deciduous model and I, I second deciduous model or if I have the first model permanent but this is a case in temporal condition and I confection a loop like an omega loop downward then I, the external arm, I pull this arm up like 20 to 30 degrees. The posterior, the this part, the hook posterior, it's about one milli, one centimeter distally to the molar. One centimeter distally to the molar. Okay. No, no, posteriorly. Posteriorly. So this hook, this hook is posteriorly one centimeter from the molar. So I put this only for the long one centimeter from the end of the inner bone right? I mean, the terminal of the outer bow is one centimeter of it, larger see, than the end of the inner bow. You see better here, look, look, imagine the molar here, the molar is here, Yes. and this is posteriorly to the molar, more or less one centimeter. Uh, cái, cái, cái 
thì cái chiều dài của cái này nó kết thúc ở phía sau cái răng cuối sữa đó là 1 cm ok so <cười> The question is that behind the medial surface or the distal surface of the the outside hook, the it's more posterior, one centimeter than the distal part of the molar. Okay. Uh, first, uh, on the upper six, it must be one centimeter yes. from the distal face of the six. Yes. Okay. Because this, that way you produce a better extrusion of the molar. This is the reason. Not because the moment of the force. I don't care too much about the moment. Maybe some of you read the article from Professor Greenspan to calculate how the molar rotates with the external force. Now, this is not what I'm thinking. I am thinking to extrude the molar. And the best, the best way to extrude the molar is putting a slightly posterior and then to pull down. This is... After four to five months, the the molar the molar was almost in class three. And and the open bite was closed completely. So this is for me was shocking at the moment because I really cannot understand how. Not more than two hundred grams. If the patient is, this patient was dolico, and you can do 150 grams, and it's okay. Because this patient is very dolico, doesn't have too much muscle to oppose to the movement. So, we use only for sleep. No, you don't have to use during the day or at school, no, 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 only for sleep. No, seven, eight, no, no. Seven, to, seven to eight hours a day, and no, don't use more than one year. Don't use, yes. So it's a very big change, a very big change with uh, only one appliance, only five months. Three months. So this is, you know, this is the, the this is the phase before and the final of this stage. <coughs> If you make a, this is a, some, I don't know, one year after I did the, the x-ray. And if you do comparison, you will, be, you will see the mandible rotating anteriorly. 
You, you will see that the first vein going down and the orgonium going anteriorly and the point A like going back. So it's very nice. If you take these two lines, occlusal plane and A orgonium from these two tiles, and you superimpose you will see this change. So this is the, the reasoning of this reasoning. So the same thing applies for the corrective treatment of the class two. The only difference is that if you have a less growth, or have no growth, you are not going to witness this amount of change. Yes. Okay, some people uh, don't believe sometimes or don't understand. I show one case that you can go back with incisors with the utility arch. Go back, not forward, because it's very easy to go forward. But how go back? This is applying the concept of cortical anchorage. And trying to put the utility in the last molar present in the mouth. So this is another fast case. It's a, a little protrusive, but she's very young, so nine years old. Pro incline, deep by, and class two. You, so, so yeah, you can see here the my protrusion, my protrusion of the the tissue. If you make a trace, make a tracing, you will see the upper incisor ten millimeters. Upper incisors ten millimeters, and lowers. Five. Five. five, five, the lowest five. Okay, yeah, I don't want in this calcation because this girl is a kind of calcation pattern. I don't want the incisor to go forward. So this is a very nice option to do with uh, mixed dentition, you put a uh, lower utility arch with all the characteristics I told you, take back, expansion, torquing, and you put this upper modified utility arch, this, then you can use the class two elastic, when you do this procedure 
Let me see if I can uh, take this panoramic copy, go this, duplicate, and then paste. Then you can compare the position of the lower molar. Because sometimes we don't get why the incisors can go back with the utility arch. The reason is that you upright the lower molar. Besides, I am using elastic cast too, but the utility arch is so nice to overcome the elastic force and go tilting back and down even. Why down? Because I have cortical anchorage and because I have an upper utility arch in this case. So after uh, after you reach the class one. Sorry, what is the the, the role of the upper utility arch? Okay. Yes, yeah, the the role of the posterior of the utility upper arch it's to extrude the upper molar. When you extrude the upper molar, you are lowering the posterior crucial plane, but also you avoid, avoid the gummy smile appearance. Because if I place a tick back, I tend to intrude the, until the incisors but I am putting uh, elastic class 2, so they do not intrude, and they do not intrude, so you maintain the order. Okay, so we continue. So <coughs> we look if you, if you see this stage, the lower incisors at this moment were six the upper and three the lower. Normally, I remove, I, I let the patient to rest, and I wait if I have to do permanent uh, corrective treatment. That's what I do always. So. When you achieve the class one, yes. So this is more or less the result of the first stage. Okay. Then we we wait and we mm -hmm. did like a perfection. This is corrective uh -huh. treatment. This is a summary. So this is now she has all the permanent dentition. It's a little bit protrusive again, a little bit, but this is 15 years, and she decided to do a, this is 20 years now. She decided to do a nasal surgery oh, here. In the nas in the nose, yes. So you, you can see here like a very long story of all the